Penn Direction, obviously the best mm -hmm. score season. Had a good road score last time. Mm -hmm. Still trying to get a road win. Does that is that how important is it or not? Are you just focused on the scores? Are you trying not to? Under the circumstances, I can't make it about that. I I have to um, stay on message with these guys, and it's just about taking the next step and being uh, improving because you know we lost KJ after this meet in the celebration. You know, broke her foot, uh, okay. jumping around, getting ready to do the alma mater with students and. And um, and then Alona's groin has gotten super inflamed, so we don't know if she's doing anything this weekend. So we're going to see more new faces, and now we're we're really at a point where we're out of bodies, you know. So I, I I've got to make sure that they. It's just about how they compete. Can they improve? Can we can we compete with the right mindset? Can we stay aggressive? Not be timid? All the things that we've been saying all year long, <clears throat> you know. We'd love to win every single meet, but you know, right now we're trying to position ourselves the best we can for the postseason, and uh, that requires that we stay on message and and really not change the focus in any way. Didn't know about KJ. Like yeah. She lost for the season. Uh, I hope not. I mean, we're talking. It could well this one. This one. They Doc said maybe six weeks, so we'd be looking at regionals. But, and, and that's if she could come back and she's enough of an athlete that I think she can get ready quick. Um, so it's next person up, you know, we just keep moving. That's, that's, that's what we're going to do. I mean, that's, that's the only choice we have. Who do you need to see more, who we're going to see more of? Uh, probably Lexi Jeffrey does a little more this weekend. Bryce probably vaults. Um, uh, Chase may be back in on floor. Um, because we pulled her after warm-ups and Elena went in. Elena probably stays in in the all-around. Um, I don't know. I don't I mean I don't have it all uh, dialed up yet. We'll see what, if Elona's able to do bars. Then bars would remain relatively unaffected unless we <clears throat> unless we felt the need to get Olivia in there. Um, so it, you know we'll know we'll know more after today for sure. But. Kind of got to let the last 24 to 36 hours pre-meet play out because every time I tell you guys something premature, it ends up being different. So, um, kind of got to let the let the chips fall where they may. Is that something this this year? Um, a is it have you had more injuries than you? Oh gosh, yeah. And, and is it hard to compartmentalize? Like, hey, we've done really well mm -hmm. with those that have come in next man up, but also what could we have done if we'd been full strength? Well, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. On the one hand, you're, I'm extremely proud of the way this team has competed all year. You know, they've, 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 they've gotten better and improved, regardless of what scores ended up being. Every week we've made marked improvement in the areas that we wanted to see, um, <clears throat> see come about. But yeah, we've had this, you know, we've had this rash of injuries that we go on some years around here where we didn't have a single thing go wrong that way. And then other years, you know, you, this is one of those where uh, a lot of things happen that are out of your control, and you know, um, if you could, if you could find a reason for them, but you know, you, you're going, you're just, just stepping off a mat to do the alma mater with your with your students. Those aren't things that are that we can control, or, or those kinds of things aren't things that we could, um, you know, do anything differently. Um, so. You, you just roll with it, and and you you know on the I, you know on the one hand we come off that high Friday night and everybody's happy, and I get a text as I'm changing clothes in the locker room about KJ, so I come running over here to find out you know where she's at, and for a moment we thought maybe it's just a sprain, we'll be okay, we'll give her a week, that's not great news, but and then once we get it scanned and get the MRI, we see that it's it's worse, and so. You know, you can't cry over spilt milk. There's not anybody that feels sorry for LSU. And so we're, there's not a person on this team that's on this team because we didn't think they could come here and perform. So it, the next person goes in and we just keep, we just keep swinging and let's, let's see where we wind up. What, what was <clears throat> different about Friday? Why, why did it click then versus all the things that you've been right there? Uh, you know, I think sometimes you, if you look around the country, it's pretty. I, I've mentioned this before. I think when in, in this conference, when teams are at home, um, it, it raises their performance level. Um, you get in front of your your fans and that kind of energy, and you get in on your equipment, and <clears throat> certainly the our kids seem to relish the idea a little bit of 
kind of being the underdog and having to chase somebody down. And they've, they've kind of raised their level every time we've been in that situation this year. And they did it against Oklahoma and, and compete. They've, to this point, they're, they're the closest team to Oklahoma in terms of a dual meet. <clears throat> and we've competed the toughest schedule in the country. So we've, you know, we've been in that, in that, in that mindset quite a bit. And it, it's a good mindset for us to be in because it puts you in kind of an aggressive situation and and it is the time of year where naturally things begin to come together a little bit um usually you're not having to make so many lineup changes this time of year but but uh but it is the time of year where you sort of start getting into that championship form a little bit how would you assess uh, the beam over the last few weeks since you've made the changes oh, yeah. the that's the beam we've seen in the gym uh all all, all year i think it I think the, the the thing was is that for the first few meets of the year, we we just seemed timid when we would get on balance beam. We weren't aggressive, like afraid to fall kind of mindset instead of um, you know going after it. And I, you know, I've, I've, the last few weeks, I've given the team a challenge. Like you have a choice, and whether it's life or anything, you have a choice to hope for something that you want, or or actionably take action and take it. And, and there, there's a difference in that mindset, you know? Um, and, and so I think they've done a better job of getting in that sort of take it mindset. And that's what we've been, we've been talking about. Can you walk, can you, how would you assess the heater that Ali has been on with, the, with these teams? Oh. I mean, well, you know, I, I'm just impressed with her overall maturation process. It's, it's actually accelerated beyond, you know, where I thought she would be, probably in, in part due to the circumstances we're in. But Aaliyah would tell you she's not where she's at without Haley Bryant, you know, and it's setting the tone and, and creating that example of how to be week in and week out. So, you know, I think it's it's part Aaliyah's maturation, but I think it's also part that she has people around her, Haley being the one that's the, the most prominent right now that, that sort of set that tone. Kaya Johnson's another one that does that, but she's not out there. And Haley has just been that steady and calm force that allows for Aaliyah to grow in that way. So I think I think probably a lot a lot of credit goes to her too. Um, I noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, with Elena's um, bars, instead of doing the pack directly out of the Tagacha, it mm -hmm. was instead mm -hmm. delayed a little bit. Uh, was there any reason for that? Yeah, it, that's the routine she did last year. Um, and we made the change this year to connect them. And then after the Georgia meet, she started to kind of question herself a little bit on it. And so it was just easy to go back. The Takacha looked great. So it was just easy to go back to what she had done previous years. And actually, because we had connected it for this period of time in the year, the pack had gotten much better out of that connection. She's able to keep her legs a little better together on it this way. And so I think it's just, um, Trying to get, I was just trying to get her back into a place of comfort. I think it was getting in her head a little bit after the Georgia meet where she messed up. So it was just kind of to try to take a step back and let her get comfortable and confident again. And so for now, we'll stay with that combination. It doesn't change anything in terms of the start value. It just makes the routine a little bit longer. And, um, and that's it. I, you know, I think originally we kind of took it out because the toe hand, um, the pike position can bother her back a little bit. Um, and that was to kind of eliminate that extra kip cast handstand and it just shortened it, but it really doesn't it compositionally this routine's actually a little better if you ask me. You mentioned <clears throat> Olivia earlier, I have to ask the the uh, required Olivia mm -hmm. question. Is there a chance she will There's a chance, but she's gotta earn it. You know, what I mean I, I I don't know who would you have me pull out after last week on bars. Like that's the that's the, well, I mean, that's said, the right. You said you have some, a couple openings. So. Yeah, well, there's a, that's the million dollar question. If Alona's ready to go and can do the job, you know, it's just going to, it really, I can't, I'm really not going to make changes um, that aren't necessary. I got kids that have been doing it all year, and if they're able to keep doing it this time of year, you don't really want to upset the apple cart if you don't have to. I know what Olivia is capable of. Olivia just needs to, if she, she's got to be consistent with it, and she's just now gotten to where she's kind of rounded into form and, and can can do it. Last week's inner squad, she was fantastic. Three days prior to that, she couldn't finish her routine. So I, you know, I just need to see it more and more, and be able to, uh, you know, be able to be able to get her in there. I, we want to get. We, we're better with Olivia done than we are without her. But you know, we got to do it the right way. What um, What about a groin injury would allow allow Alona to well to still perform? On the the way that hers is hurting it's in the belly of the muscle and so what hurts her most is her leaps on floor and beam 
and her series on beam. So it's those splits, those side, side splits, not, the, not a middle split. So like when she casts handstand and straddles, that doesn't bother it. But when she goes long ways in front and back, that's what, that's what pulls on it. So potentially bars and vault would be still a possibility if it's calmed down enough. It was swelling after the meet uh, Friday night, so. And Olivia's consistency, is that injury related? It's just numbers related. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, she was behind when we, when we get here in the fall and then, you know, gets caught up and then we have the injury setbacks and the things that prevent her from doing the numbers. So it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's not about anything other than she doesn't have the battery of numbers in in the tank so to speak that a lot of the other kids have had who have been able to from the jump be able to get into the into the progression and get where they are from a consistency standpoint she's fully i'd be fully confident putting her in there's no, i mean i'd be fully confident because i know she's a competitor um but at the same time you know when you you've got to i've got to be judicious i don't want to uh, upset what's been an, a lineup that's been getting better and better week over week and has and every one of them has been doing the job so it's you know there's got to be an opportunity i'm not just going to um fabricate one dave you don't have any thing you want to also the required nqs question yeah you at that point in the season, and yeah. did it help? Did it hurt? It seemed like it helped. It helps everybody a little bit. What last week? No, or? the NQS overall. Oh yeah, to yeah. I mean, it, it changes numbers. It really doesn't. If you look at it, it doesn't really change much in terms of rankings, which is why I've argued for years we should go straight average, and you you can drop your low if you want. Mm -hmm. You know, so that <clears throat> it, it's easier for fans to understand. I the, the, one of the most tedious parts of talking to fans when they go, "What is this NQS thing?" Like. Wait, you were going by average, and now you're only going to count less than 50%. By the time we get to the end, we count less than 50% of what we did. And so, therefore, you see why a team can start really slow and then pour it on at the end and, and be competitive for a championship at the end. And I don't think it rewards the teams that are prepared to begin the season. It allows them to, you know, it allows teams to lay an egg and then get rid of it. We got to get rid of one still. It wasn't an egg, but we, you know, we're going to get rid of that. Hopefully this weekend we get rid of our Utah score, but <clears throat> but it's just I don't know I, I just don't when you look at it historically in the data it really doesn't change a lot of how teams will be ranked because mm -hmm. by this time of year most most teams have kind of settled into a groove and they're pretty consistent with what they're doing. Um, there's outliers that can always happen, but. Um, I just think it'd be easier for the for fans and everything I do, or not everything I do, but a lot of what from what I think philosophically, I think about two things: recruiting, and the marketing piece of our sport. And I think it's easier for fans to understand if you just go straight average. They know what that is, but they gotta they gotta work to figure out what the formula is. Even if it's a simple formula, it's just like, why do you do that? You know. So, it it improved us. I think from an NQS standpoint. <clears throat> what we'd like to be able to do is to improve where we where we are and, and push as hard as we can to get a little further up, you know, at least to be a high two um, going into into the postseason. But you know, SECs counts as a road score for for us too. So so we still got some opportunities because we're going to get this weekend on the road. Next weekend is on the road, even though it's down the road down the road at the River Center. And then we'll have senior night here, and then we'll get a road score at SEC. So, um, regardless of this week, we've got some opportunities to really improve um, uh, what we what, what our score looks like. But I don't know how that plays into what other teams are doing. You know, I'd, I'd like to see us climb a little bit and get out of that eight nine kind of spot if we can. But, but you, you hope if you have a good score, and I'll remember, we'll knock out the, the Utah. It would the knock it out. Score. Anything above a one ninety. Six, seven, seven, five knocks that score out, but but then how much it affects us depends on how high it goes. You know, the higher the better. So, you know, mid to high one ninety seven is where you'd like to be this time of year, if at all possible. <clears throat>